Are you ready, Pit and Weem? It's time for Maths with Mr. Thomas. Chapter 12, lesson number 8. Looking at the locus in a complex plane. What's a locus? I will tell you, Ryan, what a locus is. A locus is a set of points that share a property which usually results in a curve or a surface. For example, if you take some points that are the same distance from a central point, so we've got a central point, all of these points here are the exact same distance from that point. If we added a few more points in, we would end up with something like this. If we added a few more points in, again, they're all the exact same distance from this central point. If we kept adding more, well, what we end up with is a circle. So we can say a circle is the locus of points in a plane that are the same distance, a certain distance from a central point. With complex numbers, if a complex number z moves in the complex plane, some subject to some constraint such that the modulus of z is always going to be 3, or the argument of z might be, for example, pi over 3, then the path of z is known as the locus of z. Oh, I see. Well done, Ryan. The equation of the locus can be found as follows, which I will demonstrate with five examples. Ooh, you're spoiling us. Remember, the modulus of a complex number, a plus bi, is given by this formula. Really, what we would do is, if you think about plotting it with an argand diagram, you would plot the point a, b. And the distance from that point from the origin would be given using really Pythagoras, so it's a square root of a squared plus b squared. In other words, the modulus of the complex number a plus bi, have the modulus signs either side, is the square root of a squared plus b squared. Also remember from higher the equation of a circle with center a, b and radius r, what would that be? Brilliant. So it'll be x minus a all squared plus y take away b all squared would equal r squared. Well done. Brilliant. Let's look at some examples. And these examples are going to be using this information to try to establish the equation of the locus. So example one, the complex and number z moves in the complex plane subject to the condition the modulus of z is 3. Find the equation of the locus of z and interpret the locus geometrically. So we're going to start off because we've got a complex number z, you know there's going to be a real part and an imaginary part. So we're going to let z equal x plus yi. We know then that if we had the complex number x plus yi, we could work out the modulus because that would be the square root of x squared plus y squared. But we're also told, you're perfectly right, Judy, we are told the modulus is 3. So the modulus is 3, which means that, well, the modulus is given by the square root of x squared plus y squared, but we're told the modulus is 3, which means then that the square root of x squared plus y squared must be equal to 3. And because the square root of x squared plus y squared is 3, how would you go about getting rid of this square root? What could you do, Alistair? Perfect, square both sides. If you square both sides, you will end up with x squared plus y squared equals 9. Woo! So, the equation of the locus is going to be x squared plus y squared equals 9, but if we think about that geometrically, well, what really would we have? Well, because it's x squared plus y squared equals 9, that there is the equation of a circle. And because it's not x take away 2, for example, or x add 7, it's just x squared, well, you know the center is going to be 0, and it's the same with y. It's not y take away anything or plus anything, it's just y. So it'd be the center 0, 0. Uh, the origin and the radius would be... Brilliant, because that's equal to r squared, well, it's just going to be 9 is the same as 3 squared, so we know the radius would be 3. Woo! Example 2, the complex number z moves once again in the complex plane subject to the condition z plus 1 take away 2i, the modulus of that, equals 4. Find the equation of the locus of z and, again, interpret the locus geometrically. So, because we've got a complex number z, what do you do first of all? Let z equal x plus yi. Brilliant, you would indeed, yes. Because you know it's a complex number, there's going to be a real part and an imaginary part. Good. 
So we have the modulus of z plus one take away two i. Let's forget the modulus just now and let's just rewrite the z plus one take away two i. So if z is x plus y i, we would have x plus y i plus one and then take away two i. Whenever you get something like this and you've got a real part, imaginary part, a real part, imaginary part, gather the real parts together so the real parts here, we've got the x and we've got the 1. They are the bits without any i's. And the imaginary parts, well, we would have the yi take away 2i. Take out i is a common factor, so we just have y take away 2 in brackets, multiplying that by i. So we can clearly see the real part and the imaginary part. If we have to work out the modulus of that, remember we want the modulus of the z plus 1 take away 2i. Well, z plus 1 take away 2i is this with the real part and imaginary part, which means that the modulus of that would be the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. So the real part is x plus 1, the imaginary part is the y take away 2. We are told in the question as well that the modulus of z plus 1 take away 2i is equal to 4. That's what we're told. So because we know the modulus of that is equal to 4 and the modulus of that is equal to this equation that we came up with, well, we know that these two parts would be equal. So we can say the square root of the x plus 1 all squared plus y take away 2 all squared would equal 4. From there, once again, what would you do? Perfect, square both sides. So you get the x plus 1 squared plus the y take away 2 all squared would equal, and if you square the 4, you get 16. Dun, dun, dun! If you have a look at that, that is an equation, and it's the equation of what? A circle! Perfect, it's the equation of a circle. So once again, we found the equation of the locus, and if we interpret that geometrically, well, what would we end up with? The circle! Yes, you're perfectly right. It would be a circle. And the points would lie on the circumference of the circle with centre. What would the centre be this time? Good. Negative 1 and then positive 2. Remember the equation is x take away a and then it's going to be the y take away a as well. So what we're taking away here is negative 1. Basically just saying change the sign for that. And here we're going to be taking away 2. So the negative 2 would go to plus 2. So that would be the centre of the circle, and the radius would be 4. Perfect. Well done. Example 3. The complex number z moves in the complex plane subject to the condition the modulus of z plus i is less than 2. Find the equation of the locus and interpret the locus geometrically. So once again, we know we've got a complex number z, so we're going to rewrite z as a real part and an imaginary part. So let z equal x plus yi. Therefore, if we forget the modulus just now, just take the z plus i. So z plus i would be, if we replace z with the x plus yi, we'd have x plus yi plus i. Once we have done that, gather the real parts. The only real part there is x. And the imaginary parts, we've got this yi plus i. Take out i as a common factor and it would leave you with y and also, we'll imagine that as 1i, so you could have y plus 1 brackets i. We want to work out the modulus of the z plus i, so because we've rewritten it as x plus y plus 1 in brackets i, we can say the modulus would be the square root of, and it is x squared, the real part squared, plus the imaginary part, that's y plus 1 squared. We are told that the modulus of the z plus i is less than 2. It's best to just now forget the less than 2 and just set it equal. So imagine if it was equal to 2. Well, the modulus of z plus i equals 2, but we also know the modulus of z plus i is equal to this square root of x squared and y plus 1 squared. So we can say then that these two parts would be equal to one another. So the square root of the x squared plus, in brackets, the y plus 1 all squared, equals 2. Once we're at that stage, same thing that we did with the first two examples, you would square both sides. Good, so square both sides and you'd end up with x squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 4. So find the equation of the locus and interpret the locus geometrically. Well, what we need to do is we need to think about this one. We change our less than 2 to be equal to 2. So how does that change it? Well, because it's going to be less than 2, it means it wouldn't quite lie on the circumference. If it was equal to 2, all those points would be a distance of 
2 away from that central point because again it's the equation of a circle but because it's less than 2 it means the points would lie within the circumference so you can say the locus of z is the set of points that lie inside the circle with center 0 negative 1 you can just get that from here 0 and change the sign here so it's going to be 0 and negative 1 and again there's going to be a radius of 2 but because it's less than you know it's going to lie inside the circle Example four, the complex number z moves in the complex plane subject to the condition arg. z equals a pi over three, so the argument is z is pi over three. Find the equation of the locus and interpret the locus geometrically. Dun, dun, dun. So we know for this one, we've got the complex number z, so we let z equal x plus y. Brilliant, with the real part and the imaginary part, a complex number. We know this time because the argument of z is pi over 3. Well, think about your argand diagram. So imagine your two axes. We've got the real axis. We've got the imaginary axis. Because z equals as x plus yi, we know that if we were plotting a point from that, we would come along whatever x is, and then we'd be going up whatever y is. So we might be going along x and up y. Or we might be going along x and up y. We don't know the actual distance, but we're coming along x and then going up y coming along x and then going up y. If we think about all these points, if you join them together this time in order to keep that angle of pi over 3, well, we would always end up with a straight line. Because we're coming up with a straight line, we need to work out the equation of that straight line. And the way it's done is we need to think about this right angle triangle. We know we came along some distance x and we went up some distance y. So because that's pi over 3, you could think, right, well, think back to your basic trig. You know that tan of pi over 3 is going to be the opposite over adjacent. So you know your tan of pi over 3 is going to be y over x. Tan of pi over 3, I would think about that in terms of degrees, so 180 divided by 3 is 60, and the tan of 60, just go to the side, use your exact value triangles, or if you've memorised it, well done. But tan of pi over 3 works out to be root 3. Brilliant. So you'd end up with root 3 equals y over x, and if you rearrange that into the form of y equals, multiply both sides by x, and you get y equals root 3x. This means then that the locus of z is the portion of that straight line with the equation y equals the square root of 3x. But if you think about that, if we had our line continuing up the way, that's perfect. That angle's always going to be pi over 3. So this angle is all going to be pi over 3. Perfect. But if we went down the way here, well, the angle would no longer be pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Because with your complex numbers, remember the argument is going from 0 right the way around to 90 and then 180. But it's going from 0 down the way. So you'd have negative 90 down here. And then you would have your negative 180. So it goes from 180 around to negative 180. So if it's down here, well, that angle wouldn't be pi over 3. It wouldn't be that 60 degrees. That would be negative something. So because of that, you have to say that x is always going to be bigger than 0. So from the origin, it's always going to be when x is bigger than 0, when x is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. If you go into the negatives, well, the argument would not be 60. So that would be your answer. Example 5. The complex number z moves in the complex plane such that the modulus of z plus 2 is equal to the modulus of z take away i. Show the locus of z as a straight line and find the equation of the locus of z. Once again, we're starting with any of these questions the exact same way. Because we've got a complex number z, we know z is going to equal x plus yi. We are told the modulus of z plus 2 equals the modulus of z take away i. Let's break that down. Let's first of all think, what would z plus 2 be? Well, z plus 2 would become, well, if we're replacing z with x plus yi, we'd have x plus yi plus 2. Whenever you get to that stage, just gather the real parts and the imaginary parts. So the real parts, we've got an x and we've got this plus 2. That'll be the real part. And the imaginary part is a bit with the i, so we'd have plus yi. From there, rewrite the modulus of z plus 2. So the modulus would be the square root of, and it's going to be the square root of the a squared plus b squared. So it's the square root of the real part squared plus the coefficient of i squared. So it's the square root of x plus 2 all squared plus y squared. 
Do the same thing with the right hand side. We've got Z take away I. Think about what Z take away I would be. Well, if we're saying Z equals X plus YI, we'd have X plus YI take away I. We want to once again gather the real parts and the imaginary parts. So the real parts is only going to be an X. And the imaginary part, we've got the YI take away I. Take away I is a common factor and we would have Y take away 1 because of 1I. And we'd have I just beside it outside as the common factor. The modulus of that would be once again the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part, the coefficient of I squared. So we'd have our X squared plus the y take away 1, all squared. We are told in the question that the modulus of z plus 2 is equal to the modulus of z take away i. So we know that this part here is going to be equal to this part. So we can set that up. From that, because we're square rooting the left-hand side and square rooting the right, well, we first of all want to get rid of the square root signs. How could we do that? I've got an idea. We could square both sides. Perfect, Clarence. Yes, we square both sides. So square both sides and you get x plus 2 all squared plus y squared equals x squared plus y take away 1 squared. From there, we could multiply out the brackets. So doing that, if you have an x plus 2 times x plus 2, you'd get the x squared plus 2x plus 2x is plus 4x, and we'd have plus 4 plus the y squared. And we'd have x squared, if you go to the side, we write that as y take away 1 times y take away 1. You'd have y squared, take away y, take away y, take away 2y, and negative 1 times negative 1 will give you plus 1. From that, we've got an x squared on both sides. So the x squared here will cancel with the x squared here if you subtract x squared from both sides. We've got a y squared there and a y squared there, so they will cancel out as well, leaving you with 4x plus 4 equals negative 2y plus 1. And if you rearrange that, just add 2y to both sides, subtract 1 from both sides, and you end up with 4x plus 2y plus 3 equals zero. Because of that, we are getting the straight line equation with our x or y or number equals zero. So we can say the equation is of the form ax plus by plus c equals zero. That's the equation of a straight line. So the locus of z is a straight line. The equation of the locus then is just what we have here. The 4x plus 2y plus 3 equals zero. Try these questions in the Unit 3 booklet, page 70. Check your answers as you go. Good luck with finding the equation of the locus in the complex plane. Have fun. Bye. Woo!